This is Algebra 2, Unit 6, Lesson 7, Quadratic Inequalities in One Variable. Now, when we solve an inequality, what we are looking at is a, to find a range of values where the inequality is true. An inequality doesn't have just one or two solutions. It has an infinite number of solutions. So, how do we figure out if an inequality has a solution or not? Usually, you plug in a value and see. All right, so let's determine if each of the following is the solution to the inequality given. And x squared minus 3x minus 10 is greater than 0 for x equals 4. Plug it in and see. 4 squared minus 3 times 4 minus 10 is greater than 0. We want to know if 16 minus 12 minus 10 is greater than 0. Is that true? Well, 16 minus 12 minus 10 is negative 6 is greater than 0. Is that true or is that false? That is false. So that means that x equals 4 is not a solution to this inequality. 2x squared plus 13x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0 for x equals 2. Well, plug in 2. All right, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. 13 times 2 is 26. Minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. So that gives me 34 minus 7 is 27 is greater than or equal to 0. Is that true? Yes, it is. That is true. So that means, yes, x equals 2 is a solution. All right, one more. x squared minus x minus 12 is less than 0 for x equals negative 3. Plug in negative 3, watch your signs. All right, so negative 3 squared is 9, plus 3 minus 12 is less than 0. Negative 3 is 12 minus 12 is 0 is less than 0. Is that true? No, that's actually false because 0 is not less than 0. 0 is equal to 0. So this one is actually no as well. So you can always test the area by plugging in. But remember, there's an infinite number of solutions to an inequality. So we are actually looking for a solution set that is describing the x's that work. Now let's actually solve the quadratic inequality. We have the quadratic inequality x squared plus 2x minus 3 is less than 0. So what I want to do first is find where it equals 0. We have x squared plus 2x minus 3, so x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. We know how to do this. Is factor, factor, factor. We have x and x plus and minus, and to get this negative 3 to be equal to 2, it would have to be plus 3 and minus 1. Set the factors equal to 0. And I get x is equal to negative 3, and I get x is equal to 1. So at x equals negative 3, your y is going to be 0. And at x equals 1, y is also going to be 0. Now, why are we looking for 0? Well, we're looking for zeros because when the y is equal to 0, on either side of it, it's either going to be positive or negative. If you think about the y, or the, excuse me, the x-axis, its equation is y equals 0. If you are above the x-axis, the values are positive. If you are below the x-axis, the values are negative. So 0 is actually going to be your turning points between positive and negative. So what we want to figure out is where my y values are less than 0. So if they are less than 0, we are looking for where the y values are negative. We are looking for negative y's. That's what we're looking for. So easiest way to do this, grab your calculator. If I go to my y equals, I've already put in x squared plus 2x minus 3. If I go to my table and look at my graph, I want to look at my values. Well, we just found the zeros. So the zeros were here at negative 3, 0 and 1, 0. Those are my zeros that we just found. Okay, now, what I'm looking at is where my y values are positive and negative. All right, if I'm at negative 3 or less than negative 3, the values would be positive. Between negative 3 and positive 1, the values are negative. And greater than 1, the values are positive. So let me fill in my values and summarize that. We're we'll filling my values. All right, so this was 12, 5, 0, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, 0, 5, and 12. So these were negative, these were positive, these were positive. Okay, so 
Why do we not include the zeros as part of the inequality? Because we are looking for less than zero, not equal to zero. Not equal to zero. Okay, so let's write the solution set of the inequality. What values of x worked? Well, it was the x's that were negative, or the y's that were negative, excuse me, and they fall when the x's are between negative 3 and 0. So between negative 3 and, or 1, not 0, because that's where the zeros are. So we are only looking between here and here. If we went to negative 2.99999, it would work, but negative 3 would not. So the x has to be between those, but not include them. So it's going to be x is greater than negative 3, but less than 1. Now, if we look at a number line of this, inequality number line, if we put the critical values on, the negative 3, put in the zeros, which would be here, and 1. We are not including the negative 3. We are not including the 1. This area was positive. This area was negative. This area was positive. So we are looking for where it's negative because it's y. It would have to be between here and here. So that's basically what you have to do. Find the zeros and determine whether they're positive or negative and which ones you need to solve the inequality. All right, so first of all, let's find the zeros. Which of the following is the solution side of the inequality x squared minus 4 is greater than 0? Let's find the zeros first. x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Factor, factor, factor. This one is difference of squares, so plus 2 and minus 2. Set them equal to 0. And x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to positive 2. So if I set up my number line, my key zeros are going to be at negative 2 and positive 2. All right, are the zeros included? Well, this is greater than 0. So are the zeros included? No, it's not included because it's just greater than. So it's going to be open circles at negative 2 and positive 2. All right, and the next thing we need to do is test our regions. So we have y equals x squared minus 4. And then go to our table. And we are looking between the zeros of negative 2 and positive 2. Well, if we look less than negative 2, we have positive values. And between is negative, and greater than 2 is going to be positive. All right, so we said this one is going to be positive, this one's going to be negative, and this one's going to be positive. All right, so what inequalities are we looking for? What areas are we looking for? Are we looking for positive y's or negative y's? Well, if this is greater than 0, we are looking for positive y's. So there are actually two areas where the y's are positive. It would be this area here, if I draw my number or my arrows, and also this area here. So there's actually two different regions. Now notice they don't overlap. So since they don't overlap, it's either this one or this one will work. Well, this one is x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 2 which would be number three. All right, let's try a couple more. x squared minus 5x minus 36 is less than or equal to zero. First thing I have to do is find my zeros. x squared minus 5x minus 36 equals zero. Factor, factor, factor. We have x and x. Uh, factors of 36 would be 9 and 4. So it would be minus 9 plus 4 to get it to equal negative 5. Set them equal to 0. And then I get x is equal to 9 and x is equal to negative 4. Now I'm going to test my regions. I'm going to draw myself a number line so I know what it looks like. Negative 4 is over here. 9 is over here. Now, do we include these values? All right, let's look at our inequality symbol here. Do we include negative 4 and 9? Are they equal to 0? Yes. Because of the line underneath them, we do include the zeros. So we draw a filled-in circle because negative 4 does equal 0 and 9 does equal 0. Okay, so what we need to do is test our regions um, here, here, and here. So grab your calculator. y equals x squared minus 5x minus 36. And then go to my table. And we are looking for the values between negative 4, here's my 0, and positive 9. All right, so below negative 4 is positive, 
between negative 4 and 9, keep going up, is negative, and once I get past 9, it's positive. All right, so I'm going to label that. I have below negative 4 was positive, this one was negative, this one was positive. All right, so what areas are we looking for? If this side has to be less than or equal to 0, it would have to be negative. So I'm looking for the area between here and here. So in set builder notation, this would be the x's between negative 4 and 9, but they are included. So it's greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than or equal to 9. Okay, that's the set builder notation for this. Let's do one more. All right, I'm going to skip down to letter C. We'll do the rest of them in class on the next uh, day. 2x squared minus 4x minus 8 is greater than or equal to 10x minus 8. First thing we need to do. Well, the easiest way to tell if something is solving on this is if it's greater than or less than 0. So what we need to do, first of all, is get this equal to 0. So we're going to minus the 10x and add the 8. Watch your signs. And we get 2x squared minus 14x, and that 8s are going to cancel out, is greater than or equal to 0. All right, now I want to make my numbers smaller, so I'm going to divide through by 2. And I get x squared minus 7x is greater than or equal to 0. Factor, factor, factor. This is the GCF factor, remember, because it doesn't have a C term. It's just going to be x times x minus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. All right, so set them equal to 0. x is equal to 0. x minus 7 is equal to 0. x equals 0 is one of my answers, and my other one's going to be x equals 7. All right, draw your number line. Your critical points are going to be 0 and 7. Are they included? Well, it's equal to, I'll look at this one right here, it is equal to, greater than or equal to 0, so 0 and 7 are included. They are part of the in solution. Okay, now I'm going to put x squared minus 7x in my calculator. x squared minus 7x. And I'm going to look for my zeros and on each side of them. So my zeros were at 0 and 7, so here's 0, here's 7. Positive on the outside, negative between. Positive on the outside. All right, so positive on the outside, negative between, positive here. All right, so what kind of values are we looking for? We are looking for where it's greater than or equal to 0, so we're looking for positive values. So the positives are this area here, and this area here. Now how do we write this one? Again, this one is an OR. So this has a range in two different areas. This area right here is x is what to 0? It is less than or equal to 0. OR, don't put AND because that AND implies they're overlapping. They're not overlapping. x is what to 7? x is greater than or equal to 7. Okay, that is the solution set for this particular one. All right, so try B and D yourself, and then we will do exercise 5 and 6 in class the next day.